It's August 27th, uh, and uh, it's 9.43 a.m. here in Vancouver. And right now I'm showing the NASDAQ futures on the daily time frame. And uh, yes, you can see we had a pretty massive sell-off. However, we do have this gap here at 13,227. So these futures gaps, they fill. And the uh, sell-off on Friday, that was Fed-induced. So, you know, if you're, you, you'd form an opinion and pick, pick which side. So obviously the uh, bearish side won and the move uh, into Friday uh, was pretty choppy at the open and then uh, started to sell off all day long, all the way down to the 50 day moving average. <clears throat> um, from the lows back in June 16th, you can kind of see that there was some sort of wave one, two, three moving up to the 20, 200 day moving average. Obviously, if it pushes above the 200 day moving average, that means we're back in a bull market. But um, as we approach the 200 day moving average, uh, form that doji and then start to roll over. And then um, <clears throat> here into Wednesday and Thursday, before the Jackson Hole, uh, the markets uh, front run the, uh, the, the Jackson Hole event, which was pretty brutal because, I mean, you were looking for a trend and follow through the next day, but the follow through was um, stopped right at the 8 and 21 day moving average. It didn't quite fill that gap at 13,227 and immediately sold off. So where we're here is um, if this is a, if this is truly a wave one, two, three on the daily, we can actually use a Fibonacci retracement from the lows to the highs. And then you can kind of get an idea of which fib level that is looking like it's going to go to coinciding with a major moving average, which would probably be the 50 possible overshoot to the 50 fib retracement level at 12,404. And then you can get the golden ratio at 61.8. And even worse, uh, you can get the 78.6 would mean a higher low and the, the wave would still be valid. So that would be one two and then three and four okay would be something such that it would not enter into this wave one termination level which would be the 61.8 now most of the time <clears throat> these fib things they don't work precisely i mean you'd have to still take some risk trading around those levels and in this market there is a chance that it can actually shoot below uh, six, the 61 point at 12,089. And if it did that, then this whole wave count would be invalidated. However, you would still use the, the structure, the wave 135 structure as a trading guide. And if it's able to hold above 61.8 and close on that same day, on the day that it actually breaches through it, then I would still maintain this wave count and look for a wave five that uh, pushes prices above the 200 day moving average. <clears throat> now that would be a pretty deep wave four. So uh, there will be bounces, there will be rip your face off rallies. I think if it gets oversold on Monday and pushes to the 50, there's a probably a, an immediate bounce to back to 12,720 on possibly a turnaround Tuesday. It'll be dependent on the magnitude and the candle shape formation plus a couple of market metrics like the VIX and the trend to help make that decision clear. <clears throat> now if I turn uh, our attention to the weekly chart, um, this kind of looks like after the COVID rally off the 200 week moving average, it's pulled back and retested the 200 week. So basically, uh, it, in, based on the moving average, it's retested, uh, the previous low with, uh, relative to the moving average, right? So whenever, when COVID happened, everything sold off pretty aggressively. And then it bounced off the 200 day moving average. Now we fast forward to now it's moved right to the 200 day moving average, retesting that same moving average that the COVID tested and had a small little bounce from, from this, from the, from these levels. Now, uh, here you can actually see the gap. Futures gaps are really rare and you can see that gap from a mile away, which means that there's going to be, um, some upside, 
uh, once this sell-off is done. Now, with this um, structure right here from the lows, right, I'm going to assume that that's wave one. And wave two would be here. That's where it's tried to push through the 50-week moving average. And wave two is beginning. So how low can wave two go, right, before it makes a wave three, four, five? Well, we'll have to use a Fibonacci measuring tool. And then you can see from the 50 week, from the move toward the 50 week moving average is pulled back to around 38.2. It's actually pushed through it a little bit and it's looking for a Fibonacci retracement of 50%, 60 and almost a double bottom. And it's really hard to tell how low this can go, right? So, I mean, you wouldn't really know unless there is a doji and then you get maybe wait for that's these are weeklies right so that means you'd have to wait a whole week for doji to form but it is important to show that this this is probably a the uh, year to date intermediate low after making the 52 week lows back in june now it could, in this situation, um, the strategy for that most people would trade would be uh, selling the rips because it's obviously in a downtrend until proven otherwise. So it could go to tag that 50, it can tag the, the, the 60. So these are weeks, so that'd be like, uh, this is next week, this is the first week of September, and then possibly down to the, the second week of September. And that would maybe, imply that the last week of September we could see uh, the final low before we rally into the end of the year okay because this uh, this gap right here is a pretty significant gap that's that's a lot of money to be made if you know that there's a gap and you just need to be in that structure so the structure right now does not look like it's moving higher right it looks like it's moving lower because of the two red weekly candles and usually if it does move in the opposite direction, it's going to form a doji like this and then attempt to kind of reverse and have form like a whole bunch of green candles moving toward the gap here. But right now, it's obviously it's not, there's no doji, there's no nothing. It's a big, fat, weekly candle. And if you know anything about candlesticks, um, there's a strategy we use. Not really a strategy, just the candle formation that kind of repeats quite a lot. It's the BLT. So if this is a BLT, that's a bacon, and then you're going to get some really choppy doji-like uh, price action for the following week, next week, and then maybe one big, big crazy sell-off, and then another doji, right, before it starts to reverse. So that's that's kind of like the the framework here. B bacon, lettuce, tomato, all the way down to one of these Fibonacci levels. And my best guess um, would be... Uh, I think, I mean, <clears throat> you can see a lot of the price action here has created a volume point of control. So if you use a weekly point of control, volume profile or market profile, you'll probably see a lot of the transactions being made around here at um, probably, I think the, the the point of control will probably be at the 11,640. Now that's a pretty steep drop and anything is possible. 15% drop. Okay. Um, so it's, we won't know until the candlestick is formed. And once it's formed and we see maybe a reversal, then we're looking for the uh, 13,220 gap fill in the NASDAQ to, to get filled and probably push uh, above the 50 week moving average, which would coincide to a, a move back above the 200 day moving average on the daily. Okay, and that would pu put the market back in a bullish um, phase. Okay, uh, obviously with that gap there, uh, you could e it'll probably be the 200-day moving average pro would probably uh, position right right at that point, which would be a which would be considered a resistance level, and then that would I mean like if there is enough positive news to, for that week to push prices back through and above the 200 day moving as then we're back in the bull market but if it doesn't then that wave three count would terminate there and we're going lower to retest the double bottom and then the the wave five count i mean 
now at, after the wave three doesn't break out, this count doesn't work anymore. So from point three to four, this is all guessing, like really strictly raw, rough, unprotected guessing. Okay, so yeah, back to the weekly wave, um, the path of least resistance is lower. The Fibonacci retracement would be the three levels that we're looking to see a reversal come in where news would transition from negative to positive would probably be around uh, these two levels. And there is a chance that we could get something that looks like a double bottom. Okay, double bottoms, I mean, at the at the trajectory at which it, it sold off on Friday, uh, a double bottom where it's going to make a higher low off of the 200 week moving average, right, it would be around here. And that would be the mega buying opportunity of the um, of the year because the gap is still left unfilled and that gap uh, is going to get filled. There was some one instance uh, during the Trump administration when Jay Powell created this gap and that gap actually lasted for uh, a year. Um, and that was very rare. All these futures gaps, when they fill, they fill pretty fast. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a one year gap fill. I think it's, I think this is the one, I mean, those gaps that fill after a year, very rare. I would say maybe like it happens maybe 5% of the time, but this one here, I think it's going to happen sooner. So the, the, the actual, the plan before you actually make decide to take action on it is just to see how this market sells off uh, into these fib levels and then if you're going to trade this market where the path of these resistance is lower then you want to trade those tickers that are trading green for all for no reason right the pre-markets will probably go green and uh, it's maybe gapping up like five percent we did something on uh, alibaba on friday and uh, it gapped up right to the 200-day moving average after gapping up three two days in a row, and that provided a pretty good resistance uh, level right where there was a cluster of volume that was probably a point of control here, and then it immediately reversed, and uh, that ended up becoming a 50% return. And if you held th throughout the whole entire day, that would have returned about 100%. And then you get this one little gap here at 94, which would probably, I think I picked up the 100, so 94 would be $6 contracts from two. So that would be uh, almost like a 300%, two to 300%. So that's um, that's Alibaba. You know, if it bounces, right, there could be a big bounce, the 102, then you probably want to short it again. But there is this A6 here, so that is a little bit questionable whether it's going to trigger higher or lower, but if it did trigger, uh, it would probably trigger once it retests the six day moving average, which would be somewhere around where the gap fill is. Okay, so I just wanted to give an update on the NASDAQ. SP is the same thing. I don't think there is a gap in SP, but there is definitely a gap in the NASDAQ. Okay, you can see it right there with the custom customizable gap finder. Question is, how low we go? This is a catching a falling market knife. So you're going to, if you're going to try to buy calls here every single time, and the reason why you would be doing that is because you're thinking that there's a rip your face off rally. I don't think the rip your face off rallies, I mean, they will happen. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen on the first sell off attempt, but maybe turn around Tuesday when if the market becomes extremely oversold, there could be a turnaround Tuesday where we would probably want to look to get some calls for the reversion back to the six day moving average. But at this point here, if there's anything that turns green on Monday, yeah, that would be that would that if it opens inside this candle right here then uh, everything I said would have to be realigned right adjusted based on the candlestick here because that if it opens inside here then you got an inside the candle and then that's a short-lived uh, sell-off which would then put that gap uh, fill in uh, quickly into uh, action and then if, if, if there's enough momentum into the end of September, then we could end up getting a wave three for the whole month of September, right? Because, I mean, intuitively speaking, intu intuitively after a pretty crazy first, qu first two quarters, it's been selling off pretty aggressively. And September is known to be a pretty bearish month, but it's hard to be on the bear side uh, after the market has done something that 
it hasn't done in almost like 50 years. So that 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 is another thought to uh, another trade idea that you want to also keep in the back of your head. Uh, but we won't know until Sunday when the futures opens, right? Okay, so thank you very much and have a great day.